Hello, I am Andrew Megdi Kamal, the founder of startup research site and social brew. Okay. It's now also a publishing network. Now the credits for this topic includes me, a theoretical physics researcher and previous research to other physicists in the past in the field. Dive Still Will Experiment was a test of the contribution of relativistic time dilation in the Doppler shift of light. However, he uses relativistic measurements to try to test Einstein's theory and prediction of the Doppler shift rather than classical measurements, also known as free relativistic measurements in physics, when he should have tried both. If both were the same result, then relativity would have been correct. But since he didn't, he made a theory that seems like it's correct, actually incorrect. Now I must explain my hypothesis in this, as well as what the I still will experiment is, and how it can be looked at as a contribution to physics if tested correctly, but a flaw when it has been tested indirectly in terms of testing and experimenting with the so-called theories in physics today. I will explain to you how this can change the world of physics if my hypothesis was to be correct. Hypothesis. I believe that since the I still will experiment uses the mathematical treatment of special relativity in testing the transverse Doppler effect in the millennium theory of relativity, it remains fundamentally flawed in the test to prove I found correct or incorrect in terms of how light travels as well as a subsequent variable of energy. Text. What is the I've still will experiment? The I've still will experiment is known as an experimental testing of relativistic time dilation found in the Doppler shift of light as Einstein theories predict predicted. Today it forms one of the most common tests used in testing special relativity. Both time dilation and the Doppler effect was predicted by Einstein in his seminal 1905 paper. That is why there is such an experiment to test it. The I still will experiment basically used candle rays and a form of particle acceleration of chemicals in order to test the waves of light, how light travels and the subsequent variables of the movement of light. So the particle accelerator basically used relativistic measurements instead of ca classical measurements, like I said before. Introduction. It appears that the known relativistic Doppler effect is one of the most understood quotes in experimental and theoretical mm -hmm. physics as well as relativistic physics. The first reason can involve how there is different diversity of wave propagation in which it can be used to describe mm -hmm. it. Also, there are mechanical waves of light that travel in terms of vibrating string or through a mechanical object or object in movement. The diversity results in different explanation on the speed of light, the movement of light, and the way light travels. Another reason is that since there is a theoretical nature of the angle in which light travels, its correct traverse is mis and often misunderstood. Okay. The most important reason is that I've never realized that the particle accelerator he used to determine particle speeds was using modern relativistic measurements and subclassical physics calculations, as I said before, which makes an incorrect theory look as it it is correct. He uses recession by velocity and measurements that correlate with the Doppler effect and Einstein theory of special relativity instead, which is one of the reasons that he is mistakenly flawed in his experiment as well as modern day scientists have been flawed as well. Okay, so we talked about the I still will experimental flaw. Now let's talk about contradicting relativity with logic, okay? The theory of relativity compresses the two theories that were made by Albert Einstein known as general relativity and special relativity. 
General relativity talks about the relations in space-time continuum that relate to energy and the relation in which the momentum of matter and radiation that are found present. It also considers the geometry of space and motion bodies in freefall as well as the propagation of light. Special relativity is a mass energy equivalence formula E equal mc where c is the speed of light in a vacuum. Logical paradoxes is used is uses of circular logic in order to contradict something. Okay, this is this is when one of the most commonly used methods in questioning something in science, especially theories. Today we look at using it to question relativity itself and its possibility. We know matter contains. We know that light contains matter, okay, and the same am amount of part and the same type of particles. But can we say that it contains the same amount of particle in each variation of light? It's based on one measurement. Can we actually say that? And we start to question relativity its itself. The, the theory of relativity has many questions like that that needs to be answered. The possibility is that first of all the universe cannot be looked at as a vacuum or be modeled that way unless it is isolated and science shows that it obviously isn't. Secondly, no matter how much details you have, how many formulas you have, and how many equations you have, it's logically impossible to calculate the average speed of light itself is consistent throughout the universe. According to Paul er, er, Aaron Best, any rigid object that is made from real materials is rotating with the traverse velocity closer to the speed of sound. However, this makes the speed of light a less feasible calculation. Even though in my opinion calculating them are very both infeasible, using the calculations of the speed of light is less feasible than using the calculation of the speed of sound. Okay, now we'll talk about basically disproving Einstein theories, okay. contradicting them actually, contradicting them. I believe that energy is, okay, this is abstract. I believe that energy is equal to the force of the velocity of mass accelerating. Also, the C in I science equation was applied to the speed of light in a vacuum, as said before, obviously. The vacuum being an isolated universe when the universe isn't completely isolated. As said before, if Einstein theory was possibly correct, the closest estimation would be E equals mc squared squared plus PC squared where P equals the momentum of the object, obviously. The text, the idea is so revolutionary that it could change the way we view physics forever. Okay. Now, what, what if Einstein's theory of relativity actually equals something like energy equals the force of mass accelerating squared, squared like the force of the acceleration of mass, of uh, movement that mass is having, and acceleration, the force of it. What if energy actually equaled that rather than using the constant speed of light? Now let's talk about the top three unsolved questions in physics and variations with this, okay? Okay. Are all the measurable dimensionless parameters that characterize the physical universe calculatable in principle and are they merely determined by historical or quantum mechanical accident and uncalculatable? The answer, all matter can't create itself. 
This must also mean that someone must have been there to create matter and have existed before matter existed. This means that the creationism theory must be correct in terms of logical reasoning and the laws of nature itself. Now, the physical universe can't solely be determined by a quantum number. It requires an understanding beyond the exception of knowledge we have ourselves. The conundrum is that there are probably thousands of subatomic particles we don't know about and many dimensions we can't prove. However, the sense of the scale and size of the universe reveals that there must be something out there and it is likely that this is it. Now the, the speed of light itself exists but it is not set off by something else rather than what was created in early times of the universe because even light itself contains matter. Now necessarily this wouldn't cancel out other variables of our understanding of the universe but provide insightful views of how we can look at the universe. Question, how qu can quantum gravity help explain 